I'm JH and in this video we'll be talking about Esteban Ocon, his recent performances and why he should get his shit together. Please note that everything I said is based on facts and of course my own opinion. So without further ado, let's start the video. To begin with, personally I like him, I like his story, everyone likes a good drama, right? In Ocon's case, basically his family went all in on Esteban. There is even a rumor that at one point, Ocon's family traveled with him everywhere and in some time, their car broke down and Eric Boulier bought them a new car. Ocon confirmed this during an interview with Tad Kravitz. Anyway, Ocon went through all that adversity and finally managed to be an F1 driver, jumping from Manor to Force India, then became a reserve driver for Mercedes before finding home in Renault slash Alpine. He even got a long-term contract extension until 2024. While that's all well and good, in this video, I want to bring up his recent performances, especially since he got the contract extension. To justify this statement, let's see his performance before and after the contract extension. Shall we? So, in June 16, 2021, F1's official website confirmed that Ocon got an extension from Alpine until 2024. That announcement was just before the French GP. First, let's take a look at his performance before the announcement. He managed to finish in points position 4 times out of 6 races, including 9th in Emilia Romagna, Spanish and Monaco GP, as well as a 7th place finish in Portuguese Grand Prix. The only time he didn't finish in points was in the opening Bahrain round where he finished 13th and at Baku where he retired in lap 3 due to turbocharger failure. So that's not really his fault. Anyway, that's a pretty solid result by Alpine standard. To compare with, at this point his teammate former world champion Fernando Alonso were only one point ahead of Ocon. So that's quite decent, right? Well, at least until the contract extension news were announced. From that point on, it seems that his performance went down. In the next 4 races after the Azerbaijan round, he only finished in points position once, a P9 at Silverstone. As for the rest, well, P14 in France and Styria, as well as a collision accident in Austria that caused him to retire. Now, Based on paper, his performance seemed to went down after a contract extension, and personally, I can think of a few reasons. First, however, we need to establish that Ocon have been an Alpine driver longer than Alonso did. Albeit he's a former world champion with Renault, the cars are way different now compared to when he won the championship. Not to mention, it's been 3 years since Alonso drive for F1 team, which in my opinion should give Ocon an advantage. Ocon should be more familiar to his car and team than Alonso. And in early March of 2021, Alpine even said that Ocon should have an advantage over Alonso in terms of team and car knowledge. So, what's the cause of his current slump? I think it's not a car problem because his team at Alonso have posted competitive results compared to Ocon. There is a possibility that it's just a common slump. Even great drivers have been through that phase, which if this is the case then okay, he just need to regroup, seek help and get out of this as soon as possible. The other possibility that I feared the most is that he's being complacent. You know, because he have a contract until 2024, maybe he thought that he could take it easy. Now, this is what I feared the most, because if this is the case, then it will impact both his skill and character development. Although in my opinion, there is a small chance of this being the case, at least based on his background, his history, how he and his family sacrificed and bet everything to get to the F1 which really shows his character in my opinion. It shows his persistence and his never give up attitude despite the odds were against him. Anyway, he still need to get it together. Because if he don't, other drivers are eyeing up that seat. And to add more to the pressure, so far Alpine's junior drivers have been fantastic this season. Oscar Piastri, in his first Formula 2 season, is currently the championship leader and many regarded him as a generational talent. The other Alpine junior driver, Guan Yu Zhou, is no pushover either. Currently, he's second overall in the F2 championship standings, just 5 points behind Piastri. So yeah, even if Ocon have a contract until 2024, he's not really safe and I'm pretty sure Alpine have the financial power to terminate his contract, if necessary. And I know Alpine slash Renault have a reputation of not using their junior driver. However, this could change, especially if Ocon's substandard performance continues and Alpine's junior drivers maintain their excellent results. In conclusion, he needs to up his performance. It's still early in the season and there are plenty of races left in the calendar. Look, it's not easy having Alonso as your teammate. He is the one that others will compare your results with because he is your teammate and supposedly have more or less the same car performance. Still, Ocon needs to prove himself, at least by posting competitive results 
and be consistent. Otherwise, despite this contract, there is a chance that Ocon could lose his seat to an up-and-coming young driver. Anyway, yeah, that's it for this video. Thanks for watching. If you like it, please share, like, and subscribe. See you in the next video and have a nice day.